welcome. Welcome to the channel, everybody, um, and to Craven Cars Live, actually, is what I'm really referring to. I am Corey Pratt. I am Chris Rock. And um, we have another fun-filled show for you. Episode, uh, what number are we on right now? 20, no. Thir five? Four. Four? Four or five. Five. It's five. I don't know. We can ask our guests when I come uh, yeah, uh, If anybody's listening, could you please put in the That's chat right. on <laughs> what episode this is? I think it's five. I mean, with so uh, many. It is. So many. So many. We're already lined up to 17 already. Hey, I'll take it. That'll work. It's hard to get all those under control. Uh, you're welcome for letting, you know, letting you handle that. Appreciate that. You're welcome. Yeah, it does a good job. It does a good job. Uh, Chris Rock, everybody in the house. All right, give him a round of, Yay. Round of applause. Okay. <laughs> um, hi, how are you today? How was your week? You know, it's been a busy week. You know? For me personally, it's been a busy week. That's kind of how yeah. I feel. You know, we've been working hard on website, graphic design, BIOS. Website? website? What kind of website? Equipment studio. Website? <laughs> I don't know where is it, I is it can like even, a. I don't even know how I can contact you anymore. Um, through the You're website. You're so busy doing all the remote stuff. Ah, uh, well, you know it's what all right. I do. Big what shout. Do. Okay, first thing we got to do is big shout to our guests. Yep. The, the first two that got online, I should say, not our guests, but our chat. Ah, oh, yes. Chanis, Fubu. Hello. iTunes, JDM. Thank you guys for joining us, nice and early. Yeah. Yeah. Who that? It's very cool. I don't. I don't know. And it is. I just saw that guy earlier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? No idea who he is. Uh, and actually, you know, because of some of the things we talked about last week, we have a uh, couple new um, sponsors to talk about uh, today that we can get into. We do. We can go over those real, real quick. quick. Yeah. And we, we can even tell you how to uh, how to become one yourself. Because yeah, we're always and, looking. And go over everything. But uh, big right. shout out to our new sponsors. We got Richline Motorsports. Big yeah, yeah. shout out to Steve, JD, that whole crew. I mean, they've been great to sponsor us. Kids and Cars, Paul and Cassandra have been amazing. Obviously, I'm on their board, and, uh, you know, it's just a great cause, you guys. I mean, they're just getting started. Uh, it's important you guys reach out to them, and if you're willing to help any anything that they need help on, please do. And then, of course, Timely Delivery Services, which is our good friend, Tim. Yep. You guys probably know him from most car shows. Uh, I would say so, because what's the thing he brings the most in? <sighs> The big uh, F-150, yep, all, all branded out with Chief stuff. All so. Chiefed out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the whole thing. He parks it on a on a whole, like, football field mat thing yep. with all the... The uh, whole 50-yard line. He's oh, got the goals, a, yeah. and he's got flags. He's got everything. It's fantastic. And uh, he's actually got a, a new vehicle in the works that he's going to start bringing the he shows is. to. And so. he brought it to the exotic show. He did mm -hmm. bring it, and mm -hmm. it was a BMW. The Saving Geeks for Kids. Yep. yep. He BMW. brought it there. He's, he's a, excited about yeah, it. Yeah, I don't want to mention this. I, I, let's not reveal his car until he's mm. ready because he's not done. He BMW. just got a he just got a bunch of parts. German. Yeah, it is. He got a bunch it of is. parts though. Just ordered. He's gonna be throwing on. He just yep. got his uh, got some stuff done. I won't I won't say, but I I kind of was. Oh, in I the didn't know of, he did. I was anything. in the middle. He's already done some stuff. Picked picked really? some, picked it up early. I saw it earlier today actually. Oh, so lucky. Yeah, it looks good. Lucky looks good. you. And it's getting better. It's getting better. Tim, awesome to have you on board. Yep. Um. Uh. Timely Delivery Service is going to have a, a newer website, I think, coming soon. So we'll let you know what that is. And uh, and all these guys will you know, look at them in the descriptions after the videos and all that stuff, too. So yep. you can check them out. So if you need anything from any of those, uh, thank you for sponsoring the show. Truly appreciate it. And uh, as a matter of fact, there's a way for other people to become sponsors if they wanted to, right? There is. Everything. I mean, most everybody's on our website anyway, so you know how to join. Uh, we're always interested, um, but we understand if you can't and you just have a product or something you want to talk about. Yeah, uh, absolutely. If you got a product you want uh, to kind of talk about, if it even can be remotely put into the uh, car realm of any way whatsoever, well, take a look at it. Take a look at it. Uh, put it on the show. Um, talk about if it's something that we think it's uh, cool to talk about. So basically is how it is. So if you got a product, you got sponsorship, um, there's a place you can go, and it's where. CravenCars.com. CravenCarsLive.com. 
I know. I was adjusting cameras. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're trying got, to get our next guest in focus. You got both. However, CravingCarsLive.com is going to be the live central hub for everything. Yeah. It's uh, it's gonna have everything. It really is. Like right now, you're watching us if you're live, anyways, on CravingCarsLive.com. Um, but from that too, it is gonna. It's got our calendar on there. It's gonna tell you some upcoming events of what's going on. It's gonna have the link if you uh, are interested in being a sponsor. Um, or just getting a hold of us as well. You can uh, email us for product type of reviews if you want us to kind of see something and let us know if, if that's something we want to we'll go over, really. Yep. Um, you've got links to... We have you, our YouTube channel, Craving Cars, on YouTube. We have Craving Cars on Facebook. And guess what? We have Craving Cars on Instagram. We have everything. Yeah. What don't we tackle? I think we did a great job on trying to get everything started. So. Yeah, I think so. Uh, we are posting quite often. We are on location quite often, and it's just actually it's just getting busier. I mean, we we haven't been on location a ton, but it hasn't had... Uh, I mean, the season's just kicking off. Yep. So we got a lot of stuff coming up. Yep. Uh, we'll talk about it as some of them get a little bit closer. Um, obviously, if you uh, want some email updates, and then if you just want to meet uh, Chris and myself, um, we're, here we are. Hi, I'm Corey. Yeah. That's Chris. Well, you're Taylor at Jazz. Oh. Well, see, that graphic didn't come through, so I'm going to go back to us. Okay. It just didn't work out. That right. works. <laughs> hey, we even have a bio, and apparently sometimes I do things and sometimes I, I don't do anything. Yeah. According to my bio. So we went over sponsorships, right? Uh, big shout out to all of our sponsors, honestly. Yes, thank but you very much. also, what, what do we have going on this weekend? Because you put this together last year. I did. Oh, let's talk about oh, it. This is it's going to be crazy. This is going to be good. And uh, I don't care. There's no weather pending with this. It is uh, <laughs> well, ra no, rain, s rain s sunshine, yeah. sleet, snow, whatever. We're, we're having the event because this is an event for people who put up with all this kind of temperature and all the yep. weather because it's for four by fours and overlanding type of uh, vehicles. So we're going to have our own weird twist of a cars and coffee this weekend called Rigs and Roast. And it's all about bring your rigs out. And we're gonna drink some nice to go roasty brew coffee. You know, but you brought you made that last year just on the whim to do it, right? Yeah. And not a whole lot of promotion, yeah. like two weeks out, three weeks out, a couple weeks take. at most. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was a great turnout from the video I saw, right? Because I wasn't part of it at that yeah, time. Yeah. Ultimately, I didn't get everybody as far as uh, captured uh, on footage or anything because you know how, how those kind of events people kind of come and go. But I would say there was thirty some odd, close to forty. Yep. Uh, rigs that showed up out of just a, a one of a first thing kind of happening, throwing it out there, not getting it to the right groups um, that probably know. So everybody would, from just already in the cars and uh, craving cars fans or or followers or whatever happened to just throw it out to a few people and right. And I already know some that really wanted to be there and couldn't make it. So hopefully they can all make it this time. And uh, what I'm, what we're hoping for is. Next time we have something like this, it's going to have to be somewhere else because the parking lot will I be think it'll be full. Get, I think it'll get too big. Yeah. I think we're going to push the max this weekend. I'm looking forward to that. And as yeah. a matter of fact, I mean, I'm kind of hoping people stick around a little bit because what I want is to be able to kind of chat with everybody. Uh, so just, I guess, might as well give people a heads up a little bit on the, on that, right? Yeah. Since it's, well, it's in two days, right? Well, less than that, technically, because it's in the morning. Yeah. We're, we're, Day and a half. We're in, okay, we'll go okay. with that. Um, I want to chat with everybody, like as a little group, just kind of put a little discussion out um, at the event and just be kind of like, how often would you want to see a rigs and roast happening? And I got a couple ideas that you got to wait until you show up for you know what these ideas are and see if it's something you like. And something You're always so into. secretive. I, well, you don't want to just throw everything at them because <laughs> well, then they're going to be like, true. oh, we know, we don't, you know, it's whatever. We yeah, yeah. Show up. No, I'm excited about this weekend because you know what? I have a Jeep. Yes, you do. It's it's an Overland version too, right? Yeah. But it's broken. Yes. <laughs> kind of like the Audi. So I'm going to ride with you. Hey, but you got, we are going to broadcast two two. live if we can, yep. right? Uh, and we'll see where that goes. I want to get a group photo, too. I didn't get a group photo last night. It'd be night. great. So l let's just ask Big this question. So 8 o'clock for everybody to start arriving, mm -hmm. right? Or does it start at 8 o'clock? It's. I got it down there from about 8 a.m. to you know 8 to 10 in the morning. Ish. Uh, to be honest, the 10 is ish, because last time I think we were there to almost 11. Yeah. So and there's still so people it, showing up. it can go longer. Than Absolutely. Yeah and, yeah. they're, and they're fine with yeah. that. Uh, it's down at the Roastery Cafe, the main... Big factory cafe is. with the big airplane and all that stuff on it. And they know we're coming. 
They should be prepared. They said they were going to try to get a few more people in there to help uh, the crowd. Since right now we're at 120-something people that has responded to um, to the event page. And I, I would say... Way more than you had last year. Yeah. But yeah. even last year you had way more than you were expecting. Yeah. That's awesome. So don't let the rain stop you. Just saying. No. If you're driving a four-wheeler like or an overlander, you right don't now. care about the rain nope. or anything. We'll you, bring, you should all have tow hitches. Yeah. There and awnings. And maybe we could, hey, maybe we could make like a circle and put all the awnings together. And we you have know this big, who huge has cover. an awning? I do. Us. Oh, my oh, yeah. One of them. <laughs> we do. We do have one. So that's cool. Maybe next I'm time. I'm excited about Saturday. Let's do that. Yes. Saturday's going to be great. Yep. Uh, I'm, looking forward to, I'm looking forward to seeing people's rigs and just the build out and all that stuff. And yeah. that's, that's something that I kind of want to dive in on the other end of the spectrum that we do a lot of times with Craving Cars because yep. we were just out a couple weekends ago with a bunch of exotic cars. Yeah. So I've never gonna, seen I'm, dirt. I'm going to tell you exactly, right? Yeah. So what I reached out to is one of our sponsors, Rich Line, mm -hmm. right? And uh, you, Line. Lifted Trucks, KC, right? Hopefully they're going to show up. But where do you go from the world of just having something that's glow lit, right? Lifted. I mean, there's a ton of work that goes into it. Where you go actually take yes. it on a trail. Well, yes, there, there is. And I, is that I, a lifestyle I think, thing? I think a lot of that is, well, there's always a lifestyle thing, right? There's always think so. some edge of it. So you're, you're like, you're, you're stuck into that or you're stuck into the sports cars or you're stuck into the lifted yeah, trucks. Yeah. And then like, for instance, a lot of the trucks you see with all the lights on it, that yep. they look awesome and, and the craftsmanship in them they're, and they're sweet. But the lights are definitely for looks where like lights added to an overlanding vehicle all have a function. Like it's there to light around it for a campsite or light your way because it's dusty all the way around you and you're off a beaten path. And it's amazing how dark it is when you're not in the city with any of the lights. You, if there's no light, it is pitch black at night. You can't see nothing unless the moon's out. It's crazy. So you got to have those lights. So that it's a different right. kind, different kind right. of way of lighting. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. But there's a crossover still. Underglow We're doesn't all really people, help you on a trail. But I look at it like this. It's, it's still, in a sense, it's a car. Yeah. They're all yep. yes, it's a truck or an SUV, whatever. But it's a that's a type of car, okay. Yep. And I look at it whether we're into you know two hundred mile an hour cars or two mile an hour cars. Right, it's a car. Yeah. we're into them. We like that kind of stuff. And so if the, hey, matter of fact, how about this? If there is something that you've not seen us ever do or cover or certain shows out there, you think would be awesome for us to get a little twist on stuff in the car realm? Let us know. Yeah, email us for sure. Email us. Um, go to the website, CravenCarsLive.com. Uh, and hey, uh, big shout out to Sean and Will's Will. Sorry, Will, you had a little bit of a problem joining us. Everything is under the CravenCarsLive.com umbrella. That's the easiest way to join anything anymore. So yep. sorry you had those problems, but and it only took five episodes in to figure that out. Uh, yeah, we did. We did. No, that's okay. That's okay. Hey, when you start something new, you always got to work out the bugs. That's true. Like there's Chris, for instance. Yeah, I'm starting. Did well, you know what? We got about 15 minutes for our guests come on. I got to troubleshoot them every day. So, I mean, so, no, um, I'm kidding. Okay, yeah, you brought this topic up, and we're yep. looking at our board, which you guys can't see off studio, but we're looking at our board for topics, things to talk about. Uh, put them in chat if you have something unique you want to talk about. But yes. you brought up this conversation. I don't know why. I don't either because it's – but you know what? I'm finding interest in it. Do, do you guys like the new headsets? Because we're going to be doing, we're, we're actually uh, 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 commentary for a NASCAR race later today. <laughs> right. Yeah. I feel like I should be on F1. You could. Just standing could up it? talking on the track. That's right. And yeah. then do some football games later. There you go. Uh, but hey, you know, don't have the arms in our way. No matter what way we turn, you can still hear us. But yes, you're right. I, I painstakingly did bring some kind of subject, and only because I've been hearing a lot of it more and more lately and i just happened to i ran into a bunch of it earlier and today, i'm so gonna it's been in my head and, and I can't i'm gonna think jump into else. it when you get into it uh, because i got an idea all right everybody listening uh, do you want to do you want to talk about evs yeah let's chat about it, Dang it ev yes. ev world uh, now we're talking true ev right not hybrids true EV. correct yeah right. electric full full 100 yep. electric vehicles as a matter of fact, there's actually some cool talking about rigs and rows. There's some cool options for those to actually do. There are that I actually like. Yep. But anyways, um, 
we'll get into that in a second. However, you know, a lot of people, long-term car people, sometimes having a grasp, a hard time grasp of saying electric cars are cool. Yep. Because they want the engine, they want the V8, they want yep. the sound. I'm sorry. Like, not not trying to bring up a sore thing. But no, like, well, you're, no. You're, I'm you're, going to monitor the your shit. VA, you guys ask questions your while we're VA, talking. You're naturally aspirated V8 in your yep. Audi. just sounds so good with that exhaust that you have on there. And you cannot replicate that with an electric car. So I'm not saying an electric car can't be fun to drive, can't handle well. And Correct. obviously, we already know that because of the type of power they are, they just they launch. You know, they're faster than yep. they can be. But are they still going to bring that same enjoyment? Because some of that enjoyment we get is the sound of the car and feeling the engine revving. And yeah. And the shifting, well, for me. So if you wanted to buy a EV car, let's just say a Tesla Plaid, right? You're yeah. buying that car for one reason. Zero sixty. Because you have a thousand twenty horsepower and you can brag to yeah. everybody that you have uh, yeah. quad digit yeah. horsepower. You're right. not buying it to save gas or anything like that, right? I mean, you don't care. That I mean it's you're buying it because you want the performance out of it yep. for straight line, just let me rip up Corvettes yep. and everybody else. Yep, you just right. want to show up in a little family looking four door sedan and go. That's for- probably the wrong idea to go down because I know our good friend Lance, he has one yes. and uh, and I got to ride it. Maybe there's a different... Bur- yeah, they're crazy. It's, I mean, it, they're great. Literally, if you're not ready, it makes you nauseous. Yeah. Like... It's like a. It's like riding the hottest go, roller coaster there launch go. ever. There you go. That's go, go, exactly go on. what it is. I can't say to here we have the, the Mamba or whatever. It's yep. supposed to be super fast for a roller coaster. You go on that and... You, and you'll be like, hmm... If, go, if you go on the Tesla Plaid first, you'll go on the roller coaster and not have that much fun. Correct. Because the plaid just, you, you already got dizzy. And, <laughs> yeah, you're, and you're like, oh, you're I, ex- I expected a little bit more G's in this out yep. of a roller coaster, and there's nothing. Yeah. So go on the roller coaster first and then go ride in a Tesla plaid. And then see the difference. So, I mean, in reality, if you're going to buy it, if you're buying an EV and it, the idea is because you're you're trying to be more economical green. or green, green I'm just going to call then it Then you will buy more of a base Tesla. I would If you're buying so. a Tesla, you wouldn't be buying a plaid. You wouldn't be buying the performance no. model. You probably actually. No. You know, for America, you'd be buying the SUV style looking one anyways. I would think so. And to be honest, we have friends that have multiple things. They have mm-hmm. the Mustangs. They have the Teslas. Mm-hmm. They have everything in between, right? I think if you're going to go down the EV route, there's a reason. You're driving, or if you're actually going down the green route, you're going down the route of, I can get from point A to B 20 times a week with no gas. I'm saving everything. I'm just driving in the city doing my thing, yep. right? That's that's one point. Mm-hmm. But if you want to be a performance car, which a lot of people are stepping up to with the EVs because yep. they see the torque. Yep. The, yeah, I, I don't, mean, I don't and, get and it. And even the performance manufacturers, look at the Porsche Taycan. Right. Yep. I mean, they, they designed to make that thing. Where, where Tesla, it's, it's a launch thing. I, d- I don't know if I would consider it to be a track car by any means, but where Porsche designs their Taycan, it's designed to just be a track car as well. The uh, the motor doesn't require the cool down like some electric cars do. If you've over, you know, hot rodded them, I guess. Um, but I mean, it's the more you do that, the more you're not going to hardly get anywhere because your mileage is going to go ridiculously down. And it's not like you're just going to be able to turn around and go, all right, let me fill her back up, right. back on the road in three right. minutes. Yeah, you know, or whatever it is. Uh, I I know they're getting better. Um, and that's going to be the biggest Hendrix or uh, Hendrix uh, to basically all that stuff is, yeah, it's really hard to road trip an EV. Right. You know, let's say. You well, want to, yeah. And, 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 if you're going over a few different states. Uh, right. Even, even You really got to stay in specific areas. Tesla so far, yeah. I think, is doing it the best with their superchargers. But the structure is not, the infrastructure is not there yet. Yeah, yeah. So well, that's the problem. Around, around town, it. it seems to be okay. Yeah, because you can charge it at night, go to work, charge it while you're working eight hours. Yeah, if you got right? a two, three hundred something mile range, you're probably not overdriving that in a day, anyways, unless you're like a delivery guy. Well, yeah, I mean, a four hour. But they drive. have those now, too. Yeah. And that brings me on to the rigs and roast type of people is. The ones that are attacking. <laughs> we go for one. V- yeah, well, well, because we're Rose talking cars, not fast the same cars. As EV. No, but they they have them now. Rivian, Rivian has the 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 R1T and the R1S, okay. and it's the truck and the SUV, all full electric. You can buy them now, and they are set to be an adventure vehicle. Like the truck has a slide out thing that you can add that has a kitchen and everything. Uh, you know, uh, right, right. Uh, 
where you can put a fridge in there. It's got a, it's got a burners, so you can cook with yeah, them. Yeah, because everything's in the it's back. Got right? a, it's, it's got an air compressor. You can air down your tires when you're going off-road, and then you can fill it right back up. It's got 1,500-watt like inverters you can plug in your coffee and uh, maker yeah. and make coffee in your camp out. Stuff like that. But the problem is, is when you're in the middle of nowhere, where are you going to charge it? You know? Well, you can't. No, I don't think unless camp. Unless you have a generator in the back that runs on gas. Yeah, unless campsites start <laughs> adding the the chargers when you go. Right. I mean, because I'm going to be going to a place next month, and uh, I think if I had a Rivian, I would. Well, I wouldn't be going there because so, I wouldn't be able to get back home. Uh, so, to our topic, our guests online. Hey, what uh, we got? They're chatting with us. They're. Uh, I'm going to call him BFF. I'm not going to call him up by his name, but. The canoe EV may be the new VW bus. I, you know what? I saw that, and I kind of wanted to learn more, more about it because it yeah, was well, very. It sounds it, like it's uh, very boxy, BFF is it not? knows all about it. Tell well, us about it. Yeah, tell us about it. Uh, BFF. Um, we, it, it is a very boxy thing, like like the Volkswagen b- buses were, correct? Square. Well, have yeah. you seen the new Amazon EV vans? They're square. Why does the design have to be square? I don't get it. Uh, maximizing space. I mean, how mm. about this? What's the reason why you make a car aerodynamic? Is so it makes it better on fuel, right? Well, yeah, but the square doesn't help the batteries at all. Yeah, but I mean, if you Wouldn't have a you good charging infrastructure, dynamic? or if it's a, if it's got a large battery bank that can handle, then you really it's not. But it's a van. They yeah. got plenty of room for batteries. Right, that's what I'm saying. So they don't need to worry so much about <laughs> why they the aerodynamics. Be ugly. <laughs> oh, why are they making it? Oh, so why don't you just ask the real right. question? Why are they? Yeah, just last not, last why are they making it square? Everybody, it, it's why is it ugly? That's, that's what right. he's trying to say. That's exactly it. I think they're why beautiful. Is it ugly? They're gorgeous. No, they're not. I'm just kidding. no. They're, they're, no. They're, they're, Have you seen the new you, Amazon vans? So you're trying to say the old the old buses like we saw at World of Wheels? Like they had a couple of them there. You think those are ugly? The old Volkswagen vans. No, because I think that has a classic style. I don't think they. I wouldn't call those square. Because they had they're, they're pretty pretty freaking square. Yeah, but they had front <laughs> rolls. I mean, they were kind of smooth on the back and the front. Even though they look okay. square, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, a little yeah. Bit, a little bit. Not just Anyways. a square box that you get. Because I think they're designing them around the boxes they deliver their products in. Mm. They're just square. Maybe it's for shipping purposes, <laughs> so they can they can put more on a shelf. They can they be. can put them together and stack them. In, in, All in, right, in Will, a box. Sa- Will says it's going to be the fastest video bus ever. Okay, show ponies on high show pony. That's good. That's a, that's a Is that's it a sh- show pony. It's or show pony. Shop NY. It's, it's Steven. Hi Steven. That was okay. Yeah yeah. Don't All worry. Right. Yeah that's right. I gave you away. What are you going to do now? Nope, but what's Steven? Out. We only know like 16 of them. Oh, Maybe. Know. Do you know, know 16 we... Stevens? No. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I don't. I probably don't either, but that's not the point. So, All right. okay. Are they ugly? Or are they not? How about everybody? Let us know. I haven't if, seen if a you're, good if you're watching EV the car ones, yet. So, that's where originally EV cars were the most ugly things ever. Until Tesla did come out, and then Tesla made the first car that, and actually, I think, believe that's why Elon Musk even bothered to do it to begin with, is because he was tired of them looking so stupid. So he's like, oh, "I'm going to make one that looks good." The thing is, have they really changed that look since they've been out? No, because I, I don't think the Teslas are ugly. I think they're built for what they look like. But now they always just look the same. They're, they haven't changed the style hardly. Right, but if you go look at the Ford Mustang. Where they went down this, who knows what world? Ah, well, they're with making the Mustang a brand, yeah, and, and then they. they it's I like, don't know. why is it? Why, I don't know why, why couldn't you that. put the batteries in a regular Mustang? That's just it. They did do that at SEMA, and it in didn't 2019, sign off on. and it literally was going to be the Mach E, and then they put it in an SUV thing too, or a crossover instead, and completely different. Yep, totally different. I don't understand it, but yeah. I was there. Anybody there at SEMA in 2019? You'll know what I'm talking about because they had it, it on stage. They had it there. It was fully electric, um, but it looked just like a Mustang because that's what it was. They that's took right. a Mustang body, took the Coyote out, threw an electric motor in there, and had the big, huge battery bank and everything. So it was it was interesting. It was cool. And I was like, oh, the new Mach-E, cool. And then I realized later on they introduced the Mach-E, and I was like, that's not the Mustang. That is some crossover vehicle. Correct. Right. 
But no, there's a lot of them. So um, that's coming news because in the future, you know, they're saying they're all going to be electric. So a whole bunch I of them. I think that's going to backstab. Just this week, just I think today, they released all the manufacturers. Um, you can just search them out. Just search uh, um, all manufacturer future EVs, and you'll just get a list of. And there's I, I started going through them to say, let's talk about them as the list. But the list was so long, we, we were not doing a three-hour show. So it's like there's no way we're going to talk about all these. We could do a three-hour show. We could. Do you guys want us to do a three-hour show? Sure, no, I'm no sure one said anything. <laughs> yep, exactly. No. They're not. No, not yet. Um, I've seen them. Not a fan. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but there, there is, there is a lot of, uh, um, a lot of EVs coming. Um, I, I do like the Rivians that come out. The truck is kind of cool. Now that's one of those things too. It's either dirt ugly to you, or it's really cool looking. But I have a feeling you're going the ugly route. Do you see EVs going four wheeling? Though? Only in a, do you see it, them being overlanders? Only in video. Only if they can figure out the charge. Well, of course they're not going to figure out the charge. They can't figure out the are charge gonna, for the basic. Cars. Are they going to be able to charge these things in the middle of the mountains in Colorado? No. So then I don't. But as far as off roading, because they literally can have four independent motors doing their own thing, and that's actually more efficient, more battery or uh, not battery. I'm sorry, uh, more traction. Control than any four by four that currently exists. True, and then you electronically tell which And that computer, that computer can cycle things thousand times a second, as opposed to mechanically can only do it maybe dozens or a few hundreds of a second. You know, kind of thing. So it's like it can be, but if you're stuck on a mountain needing to call a tow truck to charge your car, (laughs) you can get home. Well, you know what's going to happen? Do you a lot of good? Everybody's going to start mounting generators on the back of the car that run off gas. So they can charge the EV <laughs> so, while they're driving. And while well, the other people that just put the gas directly into the car just go home <laughs> at the end. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, I'll, I'll, be, uh, I'll see you tomorrow. i got to charge my car up. I think it's a great idea. I don't think the environment is built yet. The infrastructure is definitely not built yet they, to yeah. sustain anything. They uh, need to, yeah, yeah, they need to increase. Unless you're city driving. They need to increase the amount of charge they can do, which Porsche is trying to work on that. They actually have a, a, a faster ability than a Tesla to charge, but... If the infrastructure infrastructure is not there, then it's not going to do you any good. Correct. So it's not going to do you no good at all. They but, need six. But if they had that to where you can charge power. super fast, or I can plug it in, I can go grab me a snack, go to the bathroom, come out, and yep. then take off, then that'd be great. And they need to increase, they need to increase the, the the range. So if you're going on an overland trip, I've been on some that we probably only covered 100 miles, which seems not like a lot, right? Well, yeah, because you get to your destination and then it's pretty and, much yeah, off. You stay there and, and you're going yeah, so yeah, slow, yeah, you're yeah. still covering. But in 100 miles of driving slow, you're not getting good gas mileage either. So you're not going to get good EV range either. Well, no, because half the time you're having to get out of mud, dirt, yeah, yeah. climb up hills. Rock crawling. I mean, your, your, your MPG goes yep. down the hill. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's and, definitely and, not green. And, and your whatever PG that you call an EV. That's true. I That's true. Whatever your wattage stuff is. All right, but, we're going to test our new group tonight. Right? Yes. We're going to bring on our new guests. We'll let we'll let uh, one of them start it. We're gonna open up the room for everybody. Yeah, so we're gonna see if they both start up correctly. Oh boy! Oh, here we go. Releasing the studio. Here we go. That's right. From uh, Excalibur Detail, they auto detail, they ceramic coat, they boat detail, they paint correct, and they do all kinds of really awesome stuff with these cars. And guess what? Uh, definitely something you'll like a lot. They offer a military discount <sighs> on all their services. Ten percent. Love it. Welcome Love to that. the show, Taylor and Jazz. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank hey, you guys. Me. How you doing? Good, good. Thank you for having us. Oh, you're so welcome. So, Jazz, great job on the lights. Oh, thanks. It did turn out very well. Hey, you Thank get you. a round of applause as yeah. well. Woo-hoo. <laughs> Small claps. So, welcome to the show, right? Um, me and Corey talked about having you guys on for a few weeks now, just because a we have a personal connection with you, right? We've been at your shop, right, we've, right. we've been there to have cars cleaned, we've had detailing done to cars, mm-hmm. that kind of a thing. So, welcome to the show. Uh, you know, we're just going to go down the list, and we don't fake it. I mean, this is live. We just right. we do our punch list. It's Corey and I. Oh, really? You, I said, I you said me and Corey. Yeah, but I like me and Corey. It's Cor- Corey and yeah, but Corey everything and says Corey and Chris. I'd rather just be. You know, no one, no one, no one actually, and even in school, they don't say it that way anymore. Jeez. It's like that was the, that was what I raised up. I mean, that's the correct grammar, but for some reason, it's. I'm going to cut to the <laughs> audience. Cares. I'm going to cut to our 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 guests. People are like, I thought this was a car thing, not a grammar <laughs> show. Yes. Hello, hello, hello. All right, so, we're going to throw you in the bus. Go. 
Yeah. Give um, us your spiel. No, seriously. Yeah, tell, spiel? Tell, tell us about spiel? it. Oh, man. <laughs> so, um, no, seriously. Yeah. I mean, I, I, we met only about a year ago, right? A uh, year and a half ago, give or take. Um, and you were in the building you're in now, right? So Correct. So, why don't Correct. you talk about where did Excalibur... I'm going to call it detail. <laughs> go ahead. Yep, it changes. Yeah, because yeah, it changes. So I'm going to go by Excalibur. Where did that start from? How did you get your passion around it? Where did you even think that this would be a business? I'm assuming sure, it came sure. with something about a sword. You know, I, I have a fatuation <laughs> so with with like King Arthur and things like that. So that's kind of where the inspiration came from. There you it was, go. You know, was it? Yeah, yeah. I just was like, you know, I I loved King Arthur. I loved the idea behind you know, this sword in a rock that couldn't be pulled, you know. So I decided I would uh, put that into a company name, even though it had no relativity to, you know, cars. So um, as far as the shop goes, yeah, it works. Um, well, that's why we built Craving Cars Live. It had nothing to do with cars. Didn't? <laughs> no, just EVs. Just a kid. <laughs> yeah, just a sore subject of talking about electric stuff. It was, it was. I can't believe you said Anyways. that the uh, the plaid wasn't aesthetically pleasing. It you looks don't good. like the way the plaids look? I think the car looks good. The SUV looks kind of like a blob that 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 melted. Like but, it, but it was a like piece of plastic, function? and then it melted down, and then it be created the yeah like the Model was, D. Yeah, yeah. But the car looks good. But I it, think the plaid looks it, much though. better than just the regular. But they haven't changed okay. it. Okay. I don't. I don't yeah. really care for the yoke thing. Yeah, I don't plaid. care for the yoke. I don't. Thing I just give me a stupid. First time I got in one, I thought I thought I messed up. <laughs> yeah, <you're, laughs> it's just it's so it's yeah. So go do the crossover. Oop, you kind of just miss the whole wheel because there's no right. It's literally like two handles in it. Yeah, 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 it's literally two handles. It's like a video game almost. You know when they make those yoke handles with the the mm -hmm. Ferrari buttons on them or whatever. Yeah, it's kind of like the F one racing exactly. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. No, so you and can it's, buy one it's weird to turn. Like you're an F1 I know. <laughs> I got one at home. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I can yeah. show you. Okay. But husband and wife team. Yep. Right? Good for you guys. I dragged so, her into it. Uh, yep. so how did that happen? How did you walk her into this world of your Excalibur dream? I think you should tell us one. Oh. Uh, yes, let's do yeah, it. Yeah, make her talk. Come on, yeah, Jared. Yeah. I think you should tell us one. That's right. Um, well, I was nursing, and when COVID hit, it kind of went into a really rough situation with kind of everyone getting sick i uh was working in a cancer center which made it worse and i just didn't like it anymore it wasn't something yeah. i wanted to do one day i was getting ready for work ready to head out he goes go on and quit he goes we will figure it out just go in and quit and i did and from there on we've been doing it for how long now together uh like almost two two and a half years so yeah. two and a half years of <laughs> 7 a.m. till whenever. Right. Oh, oh daily. Later than that. Right? Just last week, we were there till 2 a.m. So really? Yeah, from 6 a.m. to 2 a.m., yeah. Jeez. Since this is a car-oriented show, I do have to ask, uh, so how'd you go in and quit? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go how'd ahead. you get that? I mean, did you, like, be like, hey, 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 I like you, I like you, fuck you, you know, and, <laughs> and, and I'm out. That's right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm out of here. Or was it a nice thing? Hey, my it was great. Thank my you husband for the says opportunity. I have you. I'm quitting. I, I kind of walked in and was like, hey, I don't like this anymore. And I was talking to him the whole way there, kind of like, I don't know what to say because I... That's not what you said. She's like, I'm going to puke. I'm going to throw up. Yeah. I don't know if I can do this. Yeah. 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 Well, I've never quit a job like that before. I've never just gone in and quit. No notice, no nothing. And that's years of education too, right? Yeah. I mean, that's just not something you just want to throw away. So It's not something that you usually just get up and walk away from yeah right um understandable so I, w I was nervous but your situation was different than a normal situation in from 2019 or earlier kind of thing yeah i loved it with the whole COVID I, thing i it first loved it, it and um i was working in family care and that that went really well for me mm -hmm. it was when we moved and i switched my career to like a cancer side of things that it, i just i couldn't do it anymore and it was just easier to. Well, that's a touching thing, even for us, because you know, if anything, we 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 do is a lot of different charity events with car stuff, and and we're a super plus to jump on, especially when they're cancer oriented, like to to help save yep. for things like that. So we've yep. done we've done a lot of stuff and a lot of you know. Uh, but we get kids, it. Kids I mean, that's cancer, hard. So yeah, I mean, it's yeah. hard to deal with stuff every day. Yeah. Well, I was sure. working twelve plus hour shifts, coming home and still on call. I didn't even make dinner because I had yeah. the phone going off and. Mm -hmm. I was on call every week, so. Well, good for right. you. Good for All you. Right. Good so, for yeah. you guys doing what you do today, right? Because right, right. now you can hang out 
12 hours a day. <laughs> you know, a lot of people, they ask us about it. They're like, how do you, you know, basically be with each other 24 hours a day? And I'm like, you know, long, long bathroom breaks is what I tell them. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Right. <laughs> so there is a question from BFF, uh, the, and he had a question. So just getting into the, the whole detailing side of sure. things, right? Absolutely. Is there a time limit on detailing? I think everything takes, there's phases of detailing. Sure, right? absolutely. So I want you to talk to that and typically what it would be. Right. Yeah, yeah. As far as like time goes, it's going to be something like you've got, you know, I call them like a bi group detail, which is going to be just an interior or just an exterior. Something like that only takes a couple hours. Uh, but when you do the full thing, which, you know, I'd call full detail, um, that'll take anywhere from four to five. Once you get into coatings, paint corrections, you're looking at days. You know, they, they take a lot of time. And that's why we end up at the shop so late because, yeah. you know, we'll need to, we like to do our coatings in the morning when the uh, weather isn't affecting us as much. Because um, humidity, temperature, all things like that will uh, affect how that reacts on the paint and, you know, making sure, making sure everything's going right. Cool. I can't wait till he tells us all of his secrets right here live. Yep. So another question from no, really. Will is, do you recommend a clay bar for decontaminating ceramic coat or what would you recommend? I do not. Uh, clay barring is going to mar the paint. Uh, which will mar the finish that the ceramic coating is glossing out. And with ceramic coatings, it makes defects actually come out a lot, uh, you know, a lot, a lot more apparent. Um, using an iron decon, an iron decon is going to, you know, strip a lot of that out without actually having to touch it. So if no you, kidding. It, mm -hmm. so That's if you actually had a ceramic coat on paint, but you needed to fix something, you're saying. How do you go about that? Because you can't clay bar it, right? But you shouldn't clay bar it. You shouldn't it, yeah. have to clay bar a clear coat anyway. Right? You shouldn't have to clay bar a ceramic. No, it should be doing a good job as long as you know everything's being maintained properly. And that's something we face a lot in our industry is you know ceramic coatings like us, for example, we put warranties on them because we like to back that our work and back the you know the manufacturer that we choose to apply the coatings through. And uh, you know sometimes the maintenance process through the client can be a little shabby as far as like not taking care of it very well and then it starts to accrue contamination you know it still yep. won't accrue it as fast as a normal clear coat will um but it can still happen well, yeah and do. you and you have some go ahead sorry go ahead. we do have them come in every year to make sure that they're doing everything properly too yeah um and if they aren't we educate them and we try to fix what we can at that current moment for them yeah ceramic coatings are i mean i would say 70 percent education because a lot of people don't know what they can and can't do or what is going to preserve that finish that they're looking for. Right. Well, that's right. interesting. You're talking about like that, you know, that you don't even need to worry about clay barn because there's a better way of doing it. And when, sure. when mostly what I have seen or people will talk about or whether you're just on YouTube searching, how do I do this? And then everybody, I don't know if you've seen anybody not mentioning to, to not clay bar. They're the first person I've ever heard mm -hmm. that. So yeah, clay bar should be done before the ceramic and it shouldn't be done with the ceramic on there. Right. Not unless you plan to strip the ceramic off. But you're and, talking and about there's it. better ways of than, than clay bar and there's better ways of doing it. Uh, not unless it's like with a ceramic coating, you, the reason you wouldn't want a clay bar is because you don't really want to make contact with the paint at that point. You shouldn't have to. Okay. The ceramic coating should be doing the job of that, right? Can basically rejecting contamination uh, at, at, you know, an expedited rate. But uh, bro, prior to putting a ceramic coating on, yes, you should always clay bar. Because okay. you don't want to seal anything in that's bad, right? right. Especially iron, because iron yeah, will start yeah. rust particles and things like that. But you talked about something else you use for the iron particles and all that stuff, right? Just a Yeah, just an iron decon, yep. And that's just like a spray-on kind of deal? Uh -huh. or? Yep, yep. So, like, you know, every every day you face brake dust and things like that, especially from oh, driving sure. behind cars in front of you, especially through the city. You know, you're always breaking, stop and go. Right. Well, you know, whatever. Well, those particles form to be iron, and that iron decon is going to remove those. So if you're, you know, stop and go throughout the city, even with the ceramic coated car, and we do iron decon on our yearly visits, which is about as much as you'll need to actually do that unless right. you live next to like a railroad, you know, <laughs> <laughs> okay. live it on some dirt so, trail. Yeah. So after doing something like that, let's say, you know, this is before ceramic and then you would still do a clay bar after that. Absolutely. Then? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Before, okay. before the ceramics applied. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. I guess I'm so I'll <laughs> ceram uh, put it this way. Clay bar is pre ceramic coating. Correct. Yes, sir. That's it. That's well, it. Whatever damage the clay bar does to the paint. Because it's going to scratch it a little bit. Yeah. Well, we go through and we polish it all out and everything. Yeah. Okay, so there's so, phases yeah. to that, right? So uh, just general, right? Because we talked about it before when uh -huh. I was going to bring my car. Uh, uh, where yeah. it was two-stage paint correction. 
ceramic coating, mm -hmm. right? What does that look like from a not only time perspective, but labor perspective on your side, right? Sure. Uh, go through that process. Yeah, typically a, a two-step correction is going to take anywhere from eight to ten hours. Um, that's going to be, Oof. you know, depend how diligent you are or attention to detail and things like that. Right. If you're going to, you know, if you go through and do a two-step and you do that first cutting step, which would be, you know, before doing the polishing step to fix it, and you notice that there's some scratches that aren't coming out, if you want to take the time to start digging them out, you know, scratch by scratch, that's when you start to lead into, you know, more labor hours. But then you'd follow with polishing step. We then we didn't do a uh, prep step, and that's going to remove any like greases, waxes, oils, things from the polish, anything that would impact the bond between the ceramic and the bare clear coat. Um, and then once the clear coat or once the ceramic's applied, it bonds a lot like smoother. Um, that's why we always recommend paint correction prior to doing any type of ceramic coating and, install. And that Makes paint sense. correction is based off of how much clear coat you still have in your car. Correct. I measured a brand new twenty three Mazda the other day, and I couldn't do anything to it. No, oh, it's Mazda. Yeah, didn't do anything to it, man. <laughs> Don't buy a Mazda. Don't buy it a is, Mazda. It is about the clear coat because you 100%. can't paint correct if there's no clear coat. Correct. Right? Paint correction goes into the clear coat only because once you start cutting into the paint. Yeah, if you're through the clear coat, you're not adjusting. Right? Paint so, correction is just the adjustment yeah. of clear coat. So you should, if you ah. want to do so a there you paint go. correction. So if anybody knows that they don't understand what, what paint correction is, yeah. it's not them actually correcting what the paint is is collecting correct. what's over the paint to make it actually come through the way it's supposed to. Probably. That's correct. Is that kind of to is that, buff is that out the yeah, swirls. Yeah, you're, you're, it's like, yeah. Think about think about paint like a layered cake. You got you know your primer, your base, and your clear coat. Right. Mm -hmm. The clear coat is usually the heaviest of the layers. You would hope so, um, but it's also the layer that makes Mazda. right. Unless it's a Mazda and you get cheaped out, you know, take it back to the dealer. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> with clear coat, you hope that it's the most on there. But it's what gives the the gloss. Right, so right. all base paint looks like crap before you put clear yeah, coat on it. Yeah, I yeah. mean, if you watch any type yeah. of painting videos, that's when you actually see yep. the paint come out, right? Um, and pearlescents get added between there if there's any type of metallics that are getting thrown in there. But uh, so that adjustment of the clear coat is like the main layer of the cake, the frosting, right? That's the part you like. As soon as you got no frosting, you got no cake. Yeah. Well, then it's dry and it's, it's yeah. It's, well, it always you looks drown worse it before it gets better. Huh? It always oh, looks worse before it gets better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, that's interesting because everybody thinks when you think about paint correcting, you're touching the paint, but you're not. It's really touching the clear coat. Yeah, which is on once top the of paint's the base, gone, yeah. once you're into the paint, yeah, that's I think, I think it's a that's a respray. Yeah, if you yeah, look, yeah, I think if it's you a look different at your subject. polishing pad and it's like a color, like let's say you're polishing a red car and it's red, yeah, you're you're done. You're into the paint. Yeah, so you're what done. you're trying to say is, if no matter how hard you polish, you can't get rid of all my rock chips on the bumper. A hundred percent, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Without a doubt, yeah. I actually knew that. I was because rock chips <laughs> eat through that clear coat, oh, it's correct. Get into it, the paint real it's, quick. It's probably through the and bumper. They're, even. They're, they're down to the primer, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, well, well uh, but yeah. speaking of clear coats, I know you represent a lot of companies. Fireball's been a big one for you, correct. right? Yeah. And and you have others that you like. But yeah, like like of our common detailing products. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah. But our, our main ceramic coating brand that is actually the only ceramic coating brand we install right now is Fireball. Fireball. Um, yeah, it's it's insane. Yeah, yeah. Can, can you uh, can you take shots of that like the other stuff? You take shots of it, no. yeah. Because oh, if you get well, that reminds <laughs> me of that whiskey, not that, that fireball. That, that, okay, not that fireball. So that, that, that's like not that like whiskey a whiskey sour joke. <laughs> <you heard. laughs> somebody sure. was like, somebody's like, oh, you install that's fireball? Right. Why not whiskey sour? And I was like, that's, that's messed right. up, man. <laughs> oh well. So that's actually there are, Lance. Just so you know, everybody, there are two different kinds of fireball. If they don't take a shot of the wrong one. Correct. Yeah. The, yeah. 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 Don't do you, that. You'd be in trouble. You'd, you'd be in trouble. <laughs> you'll be clear coated for years. All joking aside, of that I, how long you've been using their product on that one? So like, um, I've been using their product only for about like three or four months. Uh, we started out with some like I guess I would say the more like consumer grade side of things, working yeah. our way up, you know. Um, and I was that the X. Expo, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to we're call just gonna it out, to, but we're X. just gonna have to we'll just say call it, it, man. It's it the only one that starts with X. Was was X gonna give it to you? No, no, oh. it's going to fail for you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, it's just trying out products as you grow as a company, right. figuring out what works best. And yeah. Fireball was by far the most expensive to get involved with because yeah. they're very, it's like a tight net group, you know, uh, to try to get involved with. They're very serious about who is installing their product. Um, so we had to jump through a lot of hoops, but we finally got it. And well, I sure. knew there was would, a reason. What, what, well, wouldn't you think so? I mean, if you owned a company, that your whole job is to just sell your product so everybody else can install it, would you, I would think you would want to make sure they are more than 
educated about it. 100%. Uh, because if they're not laying their product down right, then their product isn't selling because, like, oh, that, it didn't even look very good when they did it. Right, right. And It'll give the product so a bad name over time. That that says something, though. That says something about the product, that they're that picky about it, that it's going to be that good of a product that they're going to put on there. And and cheap doesn't – I mean, expensive doesn't mean cheap, typically. So expensive right. is usually – you know, you, most most of the things in life, you do tend to get what you pay for. So true, it's kind of one of those, one of those, that's what I'm seeing. Is that right? Yeah, that yeah, yeah. Right? Okay. And there are cool. levels of clear coats, right? Years of, in other oh, words, one year, coats. five yep, yep. year, ten year, whatever. Why is it different? Why isn't it just one clear coat just does it all? So all the ceramic coatings that you'll see are going to be different solvents that are inside them, um, different uh rare materials is what I'll call them, um, that provide a longer lasting um, product. So for example, like the two year might not be as expensive as the 10 year, and that's because it doesn't have as many rare materials in it. The application of it is the same, the price of it is different. So what's the, re- what's the raw so material really, that's in it? Oh, they don't even tell that me makes, that, man. Oh, they really? don't even well, tell me that. Really? That's a, it's is like it the diamond? secret formula, man. No, <laughs> it goes, I wish. It diamond goes from, wouldn't do that. It yeah. goes from cool. lime salt cool. to... Well, what right. is it, diamond? There I was trying go. to make a recipe here. I think no. that's it. I think it's diamond. <laughs> diamonds. It's Crushed diamonds. Much what I do know is that Fireball has 2% titanium in it, which is really cool. And it makes sense because we like we compare... And that's expensive. Yeah, it is expensive. Yeah, they make like the space shuttle of that crap. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and that space shuttle's not and cheap. You know what? I saw my taxes. NASA does use a lot of clear coat stuff, right? And this is kind of where all this know. this is where kind of all the clear coat stuff came from is because they always did coatings on the outside I, of I do believe space they're the one of the ones that helped pay for yeah. the ceramic to start with was because yeah. they were trying to coat the Exactly. Coat the they were yeah. coating the outside of it to reduce heat, reduce friction. That's kind of where it stemmed from huh. putting it in That had to be bit. like an insane industrial grade. I couldn't yeah. imagine what that would be like. I'm sure it was you worth it. Right, right. right. I'm sure it was okay to breathe. I mean, <laughs> yeah. we put one, we put a coating on a plane before, yeah. and it was pretty yeah. cool, but it, it doesn't like, you know. But you've been doing not only cars, but you do cars. You, you've done boats. Boats, boats RVs, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you name it, yep. Sea and There's all not that a lot of stuff. things I won't say no to, unfortunately. <laughs> when yeah, it comes I to mean detailing. they're all paint, right? They're paint hey, with clear coats, gel coats, he saw and the, things yeah. like that. Hey, yeah. He saw the van, said, "I got this." He saw yeah. my boat at home and said, "No, not worth it." <laughs> yeah, no, I'm it's not kidding. worth it. I'm kidding. Um, no, that's actually really cool. Now, how about this? Um, car question for you. Sure. Before we get into any more details about the cars you've done, what are your cars? What do you got? Uh, we have two cars. We've got a 2024 Escape. Really lame Okay. Car. It's, In the process know. of getting rid of it. Yeah, hopefully okay. this week. We'll see. We'll see. But we just bought a uh, 2021 uh, Mustang GT50. There you go. Yeah. But you had a Mustang before. Yeah, it was an EcoBoost. I bought it when uh, I was That sucked. We uh, thought, we was, thought, was that Jazz's car? <laughs> yeah, she and bought that. Got suckered into, she bought that uh, one. Okay. I had a... Uh, oh. I had an FRS that I'd like started to nuke out a little bit, but then yeah. I went Those through one engine, cars. bought another one, and it oh. was starting to go. And I was like, "Well, I got to get rid of this thing. Yeah, this yeah, thing yeah. sucks. Those now, boxer motors are bad." So it, now, was it due to over tuning or over modding, or was it just no, driving I'm, it the I'm way a it was? That's guy. what it was. That's. I mean, it goes back to the detailing. I like how things look. I'm not really too, you know, like. My dad, he's a little race car metal head, likes to, you know, through superchargers. He's always at your shop. Yeah, he's, yep, he, yeah, yeah. And he, he, I can't tell you how much he helps out. Um, there's, and that goes back into like how we started, man. I started in my driveway. I, thank God my mom and dad actually let me do this because I used to have like three cars piled up the block, you know, and well, I, well, I was pissing yeah. off this neighbor and I was pissing <laughs> right. off this neighbor. Yeah, thank mom and dad you. are here mom about dad, it. Excalibur, yeah. mom and dad, yeah. Excalibur, mom and dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. yeah. Big shout out to the mom and dads. Absolutely, yeah. that's that is awesome. I mean, the you, to, to have the support is just amazing. yeah, it was incredible. Besides the one that's next to you, supporting right. you as well. No kidding, no kidding. I mean, she came in about like right at the end of the driveway expedition, right before we got a shop. So I always give her grief about it. I'm like, I was in there for six months before you even got there. <laughs> hey, listen, I remember your mom making a fire. Oh at, yeah, in the middle of the night because it was cold, and we were doing this detail, and <laughs> this fire just. <laughs> Oh, uh, you're lighting up the whole detailing on the My mom was campfire. trying to help out because it's super cold and the chemicals are freezing. She's like, oh, bring the chemicals over here. And I'm like, you want me to light them on fire? Right. Right? <laughs> chemicals. So That's right. Help us That's probably not going to help. It was really cool. You yeah. got something that just blows warm air because that'll be better. <laughs> we moved into the shop shortly after that, and that was cool. 
Um, and then, uh, honestly, a big break happened when we met um, a couple of our friends who is like a part of our car group now, like, you know, Jeff and Samir. Um, when we met them, they helped a lot like with the word of traffic and things like that. Yeah. And that's when we started getting engaged in events. Um, yep. And you've seen our booth. You know, we yep. get we get really fancy with it. Um, can't wait to do streetcar takeover here. It's yeah, coming it's going to be great. It's coming up close, yep, man. It is. Yeah. yeah, pretty close. Pretty close. Uh, yeah. Very excited. We're very excited for that one as well. So. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. unique that the whole can and that we always go back. I mean, we always go back to this Kansas City car community, just yep. helping everybody comes up together. The ones that are doing positive things, yeah, that's it's what's huge. important. So, I didn't even fact, realize I, it. I'd love to hear from from other communities that outside of Kansas City. You know, anybody listening to this? I mean, you know, do some shout outs. Put them in the comments below of uh, you know your community and and what you and what's cool. What's cool about yeah, it. Yeah, so. or what what it's lacking. Because, you know, right? we'll be doing a little bit of travel. Yep. Um, not entirely every place that we're going to right now, but we're going to do a little bit of travel and see other communities elsewhere, which is which is something to, you know, we know what we can do here. I'm curious what everybody else does somewhere right, else. Absolutely. That's right, absolutely. That's, That's right. That's right. Thing too. But, but uh, boat, you do a lot of boats? Have you, how many boats have you done? Yeah, like three or four. Okay. Nothing crazy. What's the biggest? I mean, what's the big, but the, they're what's pretty the easy, boat? right? It, no, Depending what? on the boat. What? what? You know? No? Okay, hold on. I'll just okay. be. I'll yeah, be upfront. yeah. Be honest. You, you want to know how much I usually charge for a boat? Like to, you know, what size and boat coat? are we talking though? What size? Well, you don't lock yourself into an agreement. From twenty-eight but. to thirty-four foot. Okay. You know? Okay. Damn, uh, that's big. We're usually like, well, that's what we're getting. the Ozarks. Nobody goes, hey, coat my fishing boat. Nobody says that. What? I would. No. I got an eighteen footer. Nobody has said that to me. I got a canoe. You want to? Chris, I have not quote, quoted anything under 26 feet. I'm going to bring him. I'm going to bring him my kayak. I'm going to bring him the 1850 bait ladder. Yeah. I'm bringing him the kayak. But we're, we end up being like coat my anywhere kayak. from like five is to six really grand harder? or something like that. It is. It's it's gel coat isn't uh, isn't the well, same. Well, that's a lot though. I mean, it's like really uh, dense. Okay, it's so extremely dense. So yeah, you're, yeah. So you're talking like from before an eight to ten hour job prepping and all that kind of stuff on a car. Yeah. I what about a 34 foot boat? Oh, that makes yeah, my van crazy. look small. Like yeah. Four or five days. Yeah, but it's all one At least panel. four or five days. My goodness. That's why I charge like five to six grand because it's going to take me almost the whole week to do it. So I'm assuming and you're doing the inside of the boat to too. prep it. So you're you're not just doing the outside the hall. You're you're doing the inside of the boat. Uh, too. no, not usually no, even no. touching the inside. Yeah, yeah. I oh, mean really? the outside is really that much work. There's like, nothing to touch on the inside. Not Everything's really. covered. I mean, for the most part. I just feel like a regular detail. Like if you're just cleaning up or wiping. Seats, put in a leather you would protector. think we could, looking, we you would think looking at a boat, it's just one big side, right? For the hull, you would think so. You would think, that. but there's levels. I know. There, I'm bringing there is. He's like, we could. I gotta figure this the, out. There's levels. But, there's levels because you have yeah. to one. It's like you know, I'm wet sanding an R33 right now, like in right. this moment, right? Right. And it was. It's the same conversation I have. Is if I have the door, I have to do it all in smaller panels because I'm wet sanding. I got to be careful, right? Mm. The door turns sure. into eight panels. Okay. Well, I've got a wet sand. I've got a compound after that, and then I got to polish, right? So that eight panels is turned into 24 panels. How much time does it take to do a panel? Mm, let's say three to four minutes, and you know, having to exchange pads and things like that. Mm -hmm. That's just the door. Four times 24. You know what I mean? And then oh, add that across yeah, the yeah. car. You know, and same for the boat. The space is so big that when you have to break it up and you can't do it all in one, yeah. gel coats don't work like that. You've got to you've got to hit it hard and then you got to polish it after. So So you're doing sections, maybe two feet sections across. Yeah, if right? not smaller. You know, yeah. it just depends yeah. on what the how it's gonna react, right. you know? Wow. Okay. Well, well that's interesting. There you go. I know what I've been doing because I did this and I guess I would ask this. Uh, carbon fiber, because we got a few minutes left. Carbon fiber. Yeah, I got another question. Do too. you paint correct and treat carbon fiber that's you, maybe been nicked? nicked? Is it still the same process with clear coat? Carbon fiber. Well, there's well, two different ways because some, some carbon, carbon fiber is bare. Not yes, all of it's some clear coated. Yes, right. The ones that are clear coated, we can fix, and I say that to a certain extent. Um, most of the time, carbon fiber faces you know extreme UV damage rather quickly. Yeah. Uh, so, best recommendation is honestly PPF it. I mean, anything carbon, you should just PPF right away. Uh, ceramic coat is cool for it, yeah, but you might as well get the protection of PPF as well to get, you know, for heavy scratches yeah. and chips. Because once you chip carbon fiber, it's not like you're going to take touch up paint and fix it. No, right. yeah, no, you know, yeah. So. so one of my more favorite things about having a ceramic coating on any of my vehicles is it did make it a little bit more simple, a little bit easier. Uh, if I need to do a quick spray off, it it just come clean better, you know, yeah. because yeah. of the surface slicker and all that stuff. Now, doing a PPF, 
do you ceramic over the PPF as well? Correct, correct. Yes, you can't do it the other way. You can't ceramic coat and put PPF over the top. It doesn't. It doesn't like that. Well, then you're not. Yeah, it probably. Well, won't I stick heard well different. I heard you. You should ceramic mm-hmm. over PPF. You ceramic no, over, over it, not under. Not under. Yeah, not not under. under. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so you wanna, put the PPF. I'm, then the, I'm the one that told you to ceramic over yeah, PPF I because I, know. I, know I heard it because of somewhere. chemical etchings. <laughs> I know I heard something from somewhere. So PPF isn't as uh, resistant as um, normal clear coat is. It doesn't have the same chemical resistance, so it's really like bugs and stuff like that. Like let's say you just PPF your front hood and you don't ceramic coat it. The bugs, as soon as they stick, if you don't get them off in a couple of days, they'll basically etch themselves inside the film so you'll you'll got the residual it'll feel like nothing's there but you will see where the bug is basically yeah, yeah. Itself. even if you get rid of the bug there's yeah. still an etching. absolutely yeah, absolutely yeah. so chemical adds or uh cr- ceramic coating adds chemical resistance which will fight stuff like that okay cool so all your bird droppings and correct all that correct. kind of stuff but also make it like i like it easier to clean too right 100 percent, 100 percent. oh that's so hydrophobic good. effects oleophobic all, All right, good stuff. Should now, be just spray the hose on it, and mm-hmm. the car looks great. <laughs> You've got I just foam mine and rinse it. It works <laughs> great. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's what, what I like about it. Is it makes it makes it really simple. Yeah, you know, I really 100%. like it a lot. Now on your on your site, and I know you're gonna you know be changing some things. Three days. And, uh, three days. And three days, guys. So, which is why we're not necessarily showing you the site now because you're just gonna have to get really used to it later. So why do it now? And that's I don't right. know why I said it that Bigger way. Bigger and better that's okay. coming. Absolutely. But I don't know why'd you go suffer? It's really cool. That you do have a lot of really nice pictures, by the way, Thanks. Um, on your site, showing some of the cars you've done. And when you click on them, guys, uh, I'm sure this is still going to be like that on your other site. You can sure. click on the pictures, and it says what's been done to that car. Correct. Correct, which is, which is actually really cool. And you've got some awesome cars on here. Now, how about this? What's the top three cars? It's your favorite car. No, how about this? Doesn't matter what the car was. What was your favorite? How about what was your favorite car to detail? Not just because you like the car, but what was maybe it was easier for you. Maybe you just, I don't know. Maybe because you made that much bigger of a difference from what it looked in to what it left. What was your favorite car you've detailed? Like that, that where the outcome was just like, my God, this is why I love this thing so much. Why this job? Mm. Mm. Now you're. This the is the reason I, I started. Know, now you're on the spotlight. Yeah, like you know, I don't know. I've, I've. I've taken cars from really bad condition and fixed them. Sure, I don't know. I don't. I can't name a time that that's ever like super fun though, because it usually takes a lot of time. Um, <laughs> Maybe more than the car costs. A little I, bit I, more. I, I, guess, I, mean, I, I guess I'm referring I, to I have, when you're done, you sit back and then you're like, "Wow, now that's." We why did I a really cool Mach show. One. It was eruption green. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, that's I've the one never, I'm looking at right I now. I've actually. never seen a more pretty flake in a car. I was about to say, you have a close-up shot on that car on your side. Yeah. And so that flake, that's it came with that flake. Like Yes, that. it came with that. It's I a, could only imagine the ceramic, because it showed it that was the ceramic it's better in person. just popped it big time, didn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. It's 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 incredible. You just walk by it, and it basically shimmers. You know, the sun going across it. Uh, it's fantastic. Definitely. And actually, that gentleman, the Look same gentleman's Look got that a flake in that car. Oh, I know. Yeah. It's, it's cool. I, I saw it, too. Cause yeah. Now, okay, how about this then? As far as just your favorite cars in general, what's it like say top three cars that, that that's coming to your shop that you just like? Oh, I just love these cars. We had a absolutely 2019 F-150 come through, just a single cab, and you'd think that was pretty lame at first until you like Sounds turn like it. it on, and it's got a 50 Coyote in it with a Whipple on it, and it's sitting on drag <laughs> so drag slips, stock. Mickey, there you Mickey go. Thompsons. <laughs> there you go. This so thing kind was of like insane. a new age lightning, basically. Oh right? my gosh! I like I started it, and I was like, that. That's weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So You're then like, we pulled it in. Hey, we're doing a up. truck. <laughs> there you go. And then you go, oh, this isn't just a truck. Yeah, yeah. That was that was that was a really cool experience. It was 100. percent I got tricked. I'm thinking, I don't know. There's no way this is a sleeper. Someone's oh, yeah, punking me here, right? right? Yeah, yeah. I just yeah. got done doing a Lamborghini. Someone's punking me here. And he didn't mention it when he dropped off. He mentioned nothing. I just he just said, hey, I've got a truck I need you to do. I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, sure. Drop the truck off. Whatever. Yeah, that's but, a truck. We can do that. Let's see. We did a 1966 Corvette. Um, the thing I liked oh, about yeah. that is the gentleman, he, all he wanted to do in the world was win a trophy. And he turned around after the <laughs> ceramic coating we did right. to this Corvette event, I guess, nearby. And out of like 256 bets, he won first. Boom. Of the paint was, correction. That's oh, awesome. Oh, yeah, that thing needed some yeah, love. Yeah. And that yeah. was one of those that, you know, I really fixed it, but it was difficult. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, Jazz, I'm going to do the last words for you. What did you get out of doing your career and now going down this path what do you what do you what do you find exciting about it about this career besides my other one yeah not being on our show i know it's exciting but <laughs> no yeah it's where is excalibur going are we, you we excited about it where we are you going you guys are your highlight right now I get that's it. right i get it that's right no, not 
Don't be nervous. Okay. Honestly, yeah. cars have always been my thing. Yeah. Um, even oh, my, my dad used to take me to car shows all the time when I was younger. We used to work on his old cars and stuff like that. So it wasn't something new of cars to me. Um, I've had sports cars my whole life and kind of gone on and off from that. Your dad had a Nova. It was yeah. a sick Nova. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Who doesn't have a Nova, though? Yeah, my mom had one once. <laughs> I know. 71 <laughs> Nova or something That's like that. Damn. What, 70s? Or whatever. I had a flu. It was fun. Is it the same? No. It was fun. <laughs> she, she's had a, she actually had a Nova wagon, 60s Nova wagon once, too. That oh. was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah when so you grow up, when we did, you know, a, a, a muscle car of some type. I th- you know, then again, what, 80% of cars that were made in the 60s were, in a sense, a muscle car nowadays. Right. You know, and it, it was a standard car. It's like, wow, look at these cool cars. And you look at it, it's like, yeah, that was just a regular car at that time. It was just right. Like like seeing a, I don't know, an Escort or a or Escape. There you go. Right, right. right. Escape. Escape. This is a car. <laughs> I hate that. Thing, this, is this is a car. Well, <laughs> let's check our chat real quick, make yeah, sure well, there yeah. isn't any. Uh, yeah, obviously, you do a lot of two paint correction. Um, Thanks, thanks everybody for the questions online. What about my van, BFF? You said not your van, Corey. What's what's wrong with the van? Or are you talking about like no, he's not going to want to actually not work on that thing. <laughs> There's nothing to work on. I have to yeah, charge you by the square foot for that. Sherman one. Engineering. Yeah, <laughs> it's possible. I don't know. But well, hey, you know what? So the difficulty yeah. with that, I would say, is because I've got, I've got. Racks on the back door. You're right. I've got a roof rack on it as well. I mean, like, does that have to? Would so if someone were to bring you something like that? So what if some of these guys from our rigs and roast event want to just get that detail, get that ceramic on because they're going to go out, they're going to be hitting the mud, they're going to be sure. out in the nature. They might want it to be much easier to clean. Right. Uh, I mean, do they got to take? They got to take all that stuff off, aren't they, to really get to everything? Right? I mean, yeah. I mean, if you if you want, you down think underneath. they should pre-clean it at least. Right, uh, not bring it straight from the field. Honestly, I don't. I don't care for the mud. It's it's you know, but the racks. It's like anything. It has to be open. Um, yeah. I guess it depends. If it's easy, I'll do it. Like we'll, we'll take off emblems sometimes and reapply them if there's like severe damage behind them. But you know, there's a lot of liability in us taking it off. Because yeah. one, we we didn't buy the rack. We don't know what brand it is. We don't know how it came on or if they had difficulties putting it on. And let's say they jerry rig something, you know, and then we pull it off and an accident happens and. We're held liable. So I usually, if they want it done behind their spare tire, the racks, they got to take it off. That's awesome. Okay, well, there you go. No, now that I know. Dang. <laughs> Damn. But you don't you work. Got like a, can like you a have any more racks pole with on a rag this? that you can just reach under? No, I'm kidding. Oh, gosh. This jokes. is why I'm just right Just with jokes. I'm not taking care of the van. Well, Too many racks. That's okay. Just go around it. No there one's going to look on it. They can't see through there it. Anyways, it's fine. It's but you know what? We're done for tonight. <laughs> Anything else you want to plug before the end of the night? Big yeah, what shout else out to, to your family, to friends, to... people supporting you. Give it a shout out. Sure, sure. Um, I've had a lot of people help me. You know, I it, it would be dumb for me to say that I did this alone. I had a lot of people uh, push for referrals, people that always talk great about me, that continue to use my services. And a lot of them didn't go, you know, give me give me that that friend discount. They They paid my prices. And they did it without question, you know, like uh, Jeff, Samir, Scott, Jace, Lance, Admir. Lance Tomlin was a really big, you know, I look up to that guy. Uh, yeah. Taught me sales, you know, which was something that I needed to get better at growing into the company. He's you good at what he does. Yeah, yep. you, can't, you can't be just good at paint correcting or detailing. You got to be right. a good businessman. You got to be a marketer. So he taught me that. Um, yep. My dad's probably helped me out the most, honestly. My mom, my mom and dad yeah, have mom and dad's. Know, put, up, put up my crap, you know, and... Uh, yep. My dad, every beck and call, I'll be like, you know, yeah. I can't mount anything. It's like it's just a weakness of mine. <laughs> I can't, I can't mount reels. I can't mount TVs or pad holders or anything. Right. I just can't. Anything that involves screwing a screw into the wall, it will come off. I suck at it. <laughs> 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 and so I make him come and do all my installations, and he does it without without even bitching, man. I just. Nice. Yeah, I came Can't home one day and the TV was on the bed. Yeah, That's I'm tra- right. I tried to mount the, the TV wall. once. No, That's right. my dad had to rear plaster the wall. It was bad. Oh. I tried to do it like two more times, and I still failed. Note to self, everybody, you need your car detailed. You can go see Excalibur, but if you need That's anything right. installed in your home... Yes, don't call me. Do not go to Excalibur. <laughs> I am not yeah, a don't, handyman. Don't call Taylor. Yeah, definitely definitely <laughs> not. There is to it. Uh, but normally we yep. would always say big shout-out to the wives, but your wife's here. Yep. So well, we'll give a big, big shout-out shout uh, to Jazz. And, of course, um, Chris and I is always a big shout-out to our spouses, our wives, uh, to our biggest supporters, uh, and the ones that put up with all of our crap. Yep. So thank you. And thank you once again to our sponsors of the show. We've got Richline. Um, why don't you bring that back up if you yeah, can do we that? We want to try quick. it again. Oh, my goodness do gracious. That? Okay, wait. 
I got like 20 things to change. Sorry, hold on. Or not, you know, whatever you want to do. All right, there it's you all go. It's good. Uh, thank you, Rich Time Motorsports. You uh, kids and cars, and of course, timely delivery service. Yep, we have Appreciate a couple more coming on board this week. Awesome. So that'd be exciting. And once again, if you are interested in any of that or any product type of stuff, uh, CravenCarsLive.com it has our uh, entry on there, links and, on, and stuff to get a hold of us. Um, so it's it's been great. Uh, thank you, uh, Taylor and Jazz, for being on from Escalibur Detail. Uh, appreciate it. I am Corey Pratt. I am Chris Rock. And to all you cravers out there, keep craving.